Hey everyone, welcome to AMS Live. Today is December 26th. We hope you all had a great uh, holiday with your family and we're gonna get right into the numbers for annuities and IULs. So for week 51 IULs, we have Gregory M, 488, John B, 588, Dallas K, 889, Jeffrey C, 889, Matthew W, 1036, Yvette B, 1229, Corey H, 1781, Mark P, 1,878, Shelly M, 2008, Katrina M, 2,400, Cher S, 2,416, Justin G, 2,682, Bardo D, 2,700, Israel W, 3,900, with a weekly total for IULs of 24,884. And then for December 12th through December 18th, issue paid annuities, we have Salvatore S, 10,900, 10,298, Ismay M and Albert L, 11,925, Alvester C, 14,737, David B and Danielle, David P and Danielle B, 16,000, Toria M, 18,294, Raymond D, 19,609, Andres S, 20,000, Dean P, 47,252, Edward P, 50,000, James P, 92,331, David P and Danielle B, 97,170, Jose F, 100,000, Joyce V and Addison S, 102,482, Alan G, 116,361, Raymond D, 128,842, Yvonne D and Tiffany G, 130,000, David P, 133,749, Chantel W, 149,019, Dean P, 181,929, Justin E. Tiff and Tiffany G. 193,000. Terry G. 200,000. Brad A. 236,048. John Y. 300,000. And Brad A. 500,000 with a weekly total of 2,869,051. Seems like that list keeps getting longer every week. Yeah. <laughs> Another thing I noticed um, is a lot of the names that are on there are people who watch the call. So yeah, yeah, you start to see those familiar names. That's probably not a coincidence. Um, nope. Educate yourself, focus on it, and then you'll you'll start to achieve it. Mm -hmm. um, another thing about the IUL list, and that isn't the best week of IULs for us. We've had some, you know, over hundred thousand yeah. dollars of issue paid. Um, but later on in this episode, Matt Smith is talking, doing some teaching. Uh, you know, the number one producer in the history of the company, and he's teaching on how to use the new Mutual of Omaha IUL Express to solve certain problems um, for people who are maybe too old for mortgage protection or when um, final expense is not enough death benefit for mortgage protection. So this is a true simplified issue. IUL that has great cash accumulation and death benefit. So um, make sure you stay tuned for that. And then we're off to Q&A, right? Yep. Yes, okay. we are. So we have our first question from Nadine, um, and she would like to know, do we have annuities where you can contribute monthly, since most of them we see are just a one-time premium? Yeah. Um, we don't. They do exist. There's a, one of the 52-week learning courses on the uh, resources tab of um, okay. FFL AMS. Mm -hmm. Talks about why we don't do... Um, uh, multi-premium annuities and now I'm going to keep it short um, the the main reason why is because that money has to be reinvested every single month it, it, and annuities really aren't built for accumulation so if you want to so you're, you're 20 something years old mm -hmm. you want to put money in every month you're doing that because you want to a quick quiz. Do you want to A, accumulate money or B, decumulate money? Accumulate money. You want to accumulate money, right? Annuities aren't made for accumulation. Once you have a lump sum, then you can build, keep mm -hmm. it safety first and yeah. then growth on top of that. Uh, equity markets are good for accumulation. They're better for accumulation. So mm -hmm. the reason you don't see us uh, offering, the reason Athene doesn't offer is because there's not a big market uh, because with the exception of the 403B, what's uh, called... Um, the tax sheltered annuity, the TSA accounts, where they used to have uh, annuity type supplements that were inside there. And even there now, they offer a lot of um, stocks that you invest in. The annuity is usually taking place after you accumulate the money. So um, bottom line is it's not a good accumulation tool, so we don't offer it. Yeah, yeah. There's probably something else better out there for them if Absolutely. that's their goal. Yeah. Then. And, yeah. and to add to that, you say, well, yeah, but can't the stock market lose money? That's a good thing. Mm -hmm. So um, you and your husband are, are building careers, you're putting money away, you're saving. 
let's say you're putting a thousand bucks away every month mm -hmm. and the market goes down, that's a good thing. If, if a share is, you know, a hundred dollars uh, a share and you have a thousand bucks, you get 10 shares. If the price drops to $50 a share, mm -hmm. you get 20 shares. So when you go and retire, you know, 30 years later, would you rather have 20 shares or 10 shares? You'd rather have more shares because yeah. they're going to yeah. be worth more. So you see how that volatility in the market, when you talk about the equity market, the stock market, uh, works in your favor when you're in the accumulation phase. So down markets are actually a good thing. You get to buy. It's kind of like real estate. You want to buy real estate at its high or at its low. Mm -hmm. You want to buy it at its low. So the good real estate moguls, they uh, wait for these recessions. And then when the market starts to flatten out and there's lots of foreclosures, they go and they buy everything up. Yep. When it bounces back, they make money. So I'm giving that as a further end of an example on why annuities are not a good accumulation tool, which is why we don't sell multi-premium annuities. Yeah. Great. Um, so the next question is from Timothy, and he is asking, are death benefits paid from an annuity tax-free? Yeah, that's a great question because that, that has to do with every person that we encounter. So when we are talking to someone selling an annuity, um, we're going to be talking to them about the tax implications, all right? Those tax implications, so if, if someone uh, dies or if they take the money out. Mm -hmm. Well, regardless of how you do it, uh, it is the same thing. It is uh, taxed <clears throat> as uh, LIFO, so L-I-F-O, and what that stands for is last in, first out. So my accounting classes, econ classes, those, uh, you know, I never paid that much attention, but fortunately <laughs> I've learned since then that it, it's usually FIFO or LIFO, uh, first in, um, first out, or last in, first out, and the last in is the interest that's compiled. So when you um, let's say I die and I pass a benefit as a beneficiary, I pass you a hundred thousand dollar death benefit. Mm -hmm. That hundred thousand dollar death benefit is comprised of an eighty thousand dollar principal and twenty thousand dollars of interest that it earned over maybe ten years. Mm -hmm. So you'll be taxed that twenty thousand dollars, which was earned yep. as ordinary income. Okay. Okay. And then the eighty thousand dollars, which is principal. Is, is not taxed. Mm -hmm. And it's the same if I were going to just access the money. Let's say I don't die. Now, the, the question here, Tim, Timothy, was death benefit, which is a great question. Um, what if I don't die? Uh, what if I just want to access it? It's the same thing. If I had $80,000 in there mm -hmm. and it grew $20,000 and I want to take out $30,000, the first $20,000 is going to be taxed to me as ordinary income. The last 10 is return of principal. Mm -hmm. And by law, this is the IRS, you can't change that order. You can't go and say, I want to just take out principle and yeah. let the interest grow and keep mm -hmm. deferring it. That'd be nice, but you can't. Uh, so one summary to that is life insurance is still the most efficient way. Now, now annuities pay outside of probate, mm -hmm. but life insurance is truly tax-free. So yeah. take that into consideration when you're making life insurance sales compared to your annuity sales. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then the one other thing, I guess, is a lot of people um, put qualified money into their annuities, though, and so then they're paying taxes on yeah, that's an excellent question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so um, when you have qualified money, so Lauren's talking about a 401k, a 403b, a 457, um, doesn't matter what you put it in, um, it's going to be taxed when you take it out. So yeah. most of the money we work with Fan First Life, um, because we work with kind of that middle class American where they don't just save up money casually, like, look, I have $200,000 in my checking yeah. account. How did that mm -hmm. get there? Uh, they do it through defined contribution plans. Most of the time, everything they take out is taxed uh, because it's going to be taxed no matter what you use because it's qualified money. Yeah. So good, good point. Time. Yeah. And then uh, the last question for today is from Paige. And her question is, in what situations is an IUL better suited for a client than simplified mortgage protection? Yeah. Paige asked some good questions. So yeah, she does. appreciate her doing that. Um, really has to do with what, what you're looking for. So when someone fills out a mortgage protection and you're focused on protecting that mortgage, 30-year term, you can get your cash back. Uh, go to write that every single time. The two exceptions would be if they just need way more death benefit than the simplified issue uh, mortgage protection can uh, can offer. I think that's two hundred fifty thousand okay. uh, dollars. I know my brother t attempted to do this business at one point, and he lives in Malibu. Um, and believe it or not, there's like a canyon which you don't have to have twenty million dollars to live there. So, <laughs> but all the mortgage leads were in Malibu, oh, mm -hmm. and people had these massive mortgages, and he was trying to offer two hundred fifty thousand dollars, and that presented a little bit of a problem because these people had multi million dollar mortgages. Yeah, it's not going to cover it. <laughs> it's not going to cover it, right? It, it doesn't mean that you can't sell in certain situations. We're not trying to deter people. I love cashback mortgage protection, but if that death benefit needs to be a lot bigger, 
then uh, then then that would be one instance. Okay. Also, if there is a need for um, uh, for offering some sort of um, uh, income, like an income gap that is more sizable. So again, if we have someone who uh, is five years younger and let's say is healthier than the other spouse and we're worried about that when this spouse dies they're going to lose their pension or half their social security mm -hmm. so what we do is we say okay well you know it's it, it equates to forty thousand dollars a year that we need to make up mm -hmm. and you know she or he could outlive the spouse by 10 years well now that's a four hundred thousand dollar situation so in that case you're going to be looking at that um that uh uh, higher death benefits. So in a nutshell, when you get past $250,000 of need, you're going to be looking at an IUL over mortgage protection. Awesome. Thanks for all the information. And uh, if you guys want to keep seeing uh, the Q&A section, just keep emailing your questions to info at FFLAMS.com and hope you enjoy the rest of the episode. Hey everyone, Sean Ruggiero, Family First Life AMS Live here on Facebook. Thanks for joining us. This is the classroom session. Today we're going to talk about confidence in asking. So what are we asking? Well, we're asking for money. We're asking for people who we have sat down with in um, whether it's uh, mortgage protection or final expense appointments. So we've sat down with them in an insurance appointment. Again, that's protecting their human capital. And we're asking them if we can help them protect their financial capital, and that is an annuity, right? So we go through the financial inventory, we ask the golden question, do you have anything that acts like insurance, such as a 401k, uh, um, a, an annuity, uh, an IRA, something that will pass to your, uh, to your spouse free of probate if you were to pass? And the person says, yes, I do. I do have that, okay? Well, how do we get to that next question? What, what I've done is I've talked to some of the top annuity producers and asked them what questions are they asking in the home to get those statements, all right, to get those retirement statements, to get those account statements, those 401k statements, those IRA statements, and then go to ask a specialist and, and uncover annuity volume. Uh, and, and, and here's what I found. So the first thing I, I, I learned, which was universal, this was very, very easy to find when I spoke to everyone, and it goes back, if you hear Matt Smith teach about his annuity training, it goes back to the original idea that it's fear of loss. Okay, Why am I mentioning this? Because I know agents who have attempted to sell the bonus. I've known agents that have, have talked about um, uh, simply jumping straight to income. I know agents that have talked about the interest rate. All right? I, I, you know, we can beat the market. None of these things are as effective as establishing a fear of loss. Now, what does that mean? Well, let's take a look at a couple of examples. Uh, one that we've taught for a long time, which is still a very, very good question. Again, we've identified someone in the home who has a 401k, let's say. Let's say it's $300,000. And we ask them, how much of that can you afford to lose? Okay, it's worked very, very well for us. There's many of you out there that use that, what I call segue question. How much of that can you afford to lose? Now, on the flip side, it sounds like you're being tricky just a little bit. Um, I've never been totally comfortable asking that question. I usually ask some other things uh, like what is your plan for your RMDs, but I don't want to get agents off on a tangent and get them get the client focused on the agent like they're some sort of retirement expert. They're there to protect their financial capital and fear of loss is proven to be the number one reason that people listen to you. So if we say how much can you afford to lose, I think that's good. I think that's good, but I think we might even be able to do better. Here's another one. Are you protected against the next bear market? All right. Now, what is a bear market? Remember, bulls charge up, bears tear down. We haven't had a bear market uh, for, for over 10 years now. Now, we came close December of 2018 when the market dropped. Uh, technically, it was a bear market for one month, but it wasn't for, uh, you know, for a full quarter. Uh, so it really didn't count. It was just a dip. Market came back up and it's been gradually going up. A lot of people feel that the, the S&P 500 could reach 33 or 3400. Uh, we keep pushing up towards that ceiling. Part of the reason why is because the bond market, the rates, the overnight rates are so low uh, that there's really not much else that institutions can invest in, so they keep investing in the stock market. But eventually, the market will come down. It will have a correction. Will it be a 20, 30, 40, 50% loss? I don't know. 
all right? But there will be losses in the future. There will be years in my retirement. Let's say I'm 65 years old. I'm gonna to live to 85, maybe 95. So over those three decades, do you think I can just escape, uh, you know, not having a down market? Of course not. Uh, the market should go up more than it goes down, but there will be a bear market. So are you protected against the bear market? Also a good one. But here's the only problem with that statement. Are you protected against the bear market? It's that fear of loss, but it's, it, it seems almost like it's not going to happen. Okay, so you see these TV shows about the doomsday preppers and they've got all this stuff which makes sense. And once you start thinking about it, you think, you know, maybe I should do some preparation too. But you know what? It's not front of mind. It seems so far fresh from reality that I'm going to put it off. Right? Now, a nuclear holocaust is probably far less likely than the next bear market, I hope. Um, but it just gives them enough separation from reality that it doesn't become urgent. That's why I don't totally like that one. And then here's the third one. Uh, if I showed you a product that allowed you to participate, to participate in market upside and protect you from all market downside, would you be interested in seeing that? Now, the only reason I don't like that, because it's actually a very good question, the only reason I don't like that is um, it, it sounds a little cheesy. It sounds a little salesy. Now, if you're using any of these, if you're using them for certain types of people, by all means, I encourage you to keep using them if you're selling three, four, five million dollars of annuities a year. But if you're not, or if you've never sat down and had the ability to ask someone, then here's what I think you should ask them. You're gonna ask them this. You're gonna say, what have you done to safeguard your money against fees and market loss? What have you done to safeguard your money against fees and market loss? See, we're being assumptive. So to go back here, how much can you afford to lose? I, I don't know, is that a trick question? Are you protected against the next bear market? Well, will the next bear market really happen? Or are, are we building up a, a, you know, a situation where it doesn't seem very realistic? All I'm saying is what have you done because I'm assuming you've done something. What have you done to safeguard your money against fees and market loss? So that's the statement I want you to take from this. And I want you to put it into, into practice today. The next person that you're meeting with, the next person that you talk to, okay? We've all got friends and families have confidence in this. A lot of us feel that we have to be, uh, we have to be registered securities agents. We have to be um, investment advisors in order to talk about people's money. That's absolutely not true. Let's say you have someone who's 58, 62 years old, whatever it might be, and you know they're heading into retirement. Why don't you ask them? How many people did you sit down with over Thanksgiving, over Christmas dinner, or whatever you're celebrating through the holidays? How many people are you gonna see over the New Year's? I challenge you, ask two people this question. What have you done to safeguard your money against fees and market loss? What have you done to safeguard your money against fees and market loss? Now. Tom Hagner talks about using third parties to help justify what we're selling. Because obviously I'm gonna say something's good, but if I tell them this, I'm talking about the FIA, the fixed index annuity, which is the fastest growing retirement product over the last 10 years for a reason. Now that's a factual stat. If you look at LIMRA, L-I-M-R-I, M-R-A, used to stand for the Life Insurance Marketing Research uh, Association, now it's just LIMRA. Um, LIMRA states that the fastest growing retirement vehicle, meaning it's had the fastest growth year over year and is now the number one uh, sell, sold annuity uh, in the United States, is the fixed indexed annuity, okay? It is passing the variable annuity. It has passed the SPIA, it passed the DIA, it passed the fixed annuity. But the fixed index annuity is the fastest growing year to year retirement product over the last 10 years, okay? So now I've used this statistic and I've got someone's interest peak because if I said to someone, what have you done to safeguard your money against fees and market loss? If they say nothing, they're probably going to feel a, a little unsure that they should be saying that. This gives you an assumption that you need to do something to safeguard your money against fears, fees and market loss. All right. And I point to a product that has been the fastest growing retirement product of the last 10 years, meaning it's not just my agenda. Millions of Americans across the country are purchasing these products, the fixed index annuity, to safeguard their money against fees and market loss. So remember, we're going to be able to eliminate fees, eliminate risk, and eliminate worry. And what is that worry? Let's dissect that a little bit more for the client. Worry is, am I getting screwed over with fees, right? 
Is there things in here that I don't understand on my statement that are charging me and costing me money? Worry is when will the next bear market hit? I've given this analogy before, <coughs> excuse me, but since 1970, the S&P 500 has gone down 27% of the time. Well, that's not bad when we're investing over a period of time. That's why I'm a believer in the market. But if you were gonna buy a plane ticket, here's my retirement, my flight to Hawaii, and you're boarding an airline that crashes 27% of the time, there's no way you would touch it, right? So eliminate risk is eliminating the worry that the market's gonna go down tomorrow, or it's gonna go down when you start taking out your RMDs, or it's gonna go down when you reach in there to grab some money to purchase your next car or give money to the kids for college. And eliminate worry that you'll never have to think about outliving your money because all annuities can be annuitized. They can provide lifetime income from you and your spouse. So let's remember this question, what have you done to safeguard your money against fees and market loss? And I challenge you to ask at least two people over New Year's that question. Thank you everyone. Stay tuned for more good information. Hey everyone, uh, this is Mike Schroes with Family First Life Heritage and I uh, just want to thank uh, Sean and his team for asking me to put this video together regarding some annuities that I have uh, been able to write and uh, pass through suitability and also ultimately get paid on. Um, this happened recently, so just kind of want to share um, the story on, on how it all came about. It was my largest um, annuity that I've done thus far, $467,000. Uh, and I want to just tell you how it happened. I went to uh, Lead Gurus and I bought a final expense. I bought a group of 20 just to run in my immediate area here at home in Southern Alabama and uh, got a lead uh, that costs $18 in the batch of, of uh, 20. Um, I called this particular person she was very easy to set an appointment with. Um, I called her, told her I was coming over, told her why. Uh, she was interested in the state regulated life insurance, set the appointment, go over, and I sat with her. But when I get there, I noticed, number one, the house is a very nice house. I, and I'm listening to her as I walk in. I'm just listening to things she's saying. Oh, yes, I just paid cash for this house. I have a house down at the beach. And my first thought was, okay, this lady's got some money. Um, she's obviously well-to-do. And, and then she just kind of starts talking about some property she has out at the lake and things of that nature. And I think, okay, this may not be as much of a final expense as it is going to be an annuity. So when I get asking her about, okay, you know, we go down the client worksheet, I ask her what insurance she has in place, and she just looks across the table and she says, Mike, I'm going to be very honest with you. I'm not doing this for me. I'm a retired insurance agent. I owned a local agency years ago and a friend of mine reached out to me because they have no burial insurance and that's why I was filling out forms online just really trying to get some information so that's what I'm doing I have plenty of life insurance I have plenty of money and I don't need life insurance so here's the scenario with my friend they told me about their friend I said well I really need to meet with them uh, and she said, that's fine. I'll just give you their information. I said, well, you know, while I have you, I said, and I just asked her point blank, um, when you was in, did you do many annuities? Uh, and she said, you know, no, I didn't because, well, they were just so difficult to understand. And, and she'd been retired for, gosh, she's probably been out of the business 15, 20 years now. But she explained to me that she had never done the annuities because they were difficult to understand. And, you know, we talked a little bit about the uh, variable annuity and and uh, the pros and the cons of those. And I said, you know, we now have fixed index annuities. And I said, you know, if you have something, you know, in your, one of your retirement accounts, I'd be glad just do an illustration, show you how they work. Just made it nonchalant, made it really her idea. She said, what kind of return could I get on it? And I said, right now, uh, they're coming back showing that uh, on average, you should get 6%. She looked across the table, put both hands on the table, said, you get me 6% and I'll roll a $467,000 account that I have, I'll do it tomorrow. So I go and I get it, and lo and behold, she, uh, she does it. First time, it was, e it was almost too easy. It was, it was scary, it was so easy. And then I find out she has a boyfriend. Her boyfriend's living in her house down on the beach. Her boyfriend comes up, we get talking, 
He has what he thought was $70,000 in an account. She said, you need to get it out of there and give it to Mike and let him put it in an annuity. I didn't even have to sell it. She did it for me. So she tells him, put that $70,000 in annuity. I don't like those people anyway. What I'm learning is whatever this lady says, it goes. So, so here's the deal. Uh, I end up getting that, and I, I think it's going to be for $70,000. So off of the $469,000, I end up writing an additional $111,000. So, you know, quick math, that's, you know, whatever it is, uh, 580, something like that. Um, so now, though, his boss has his account in the same place, and his best friend does as well because it's a work buddy, and come to find out neither of them are happy with uh, their uh, investments. So I'm going to be meeting with them. So off of an $18 account, I could be looking at potentially writing off an $18 lead. I could be writing four annuities. And by the time it's all said and done, I'm guessing if these other two go through, I could be looking at writing off of this $18 lead about a million dollars in annuity money. Um, so I just wanted to share that with y'all. And, and here's the funny thing. When I called her friend who was looking for life insurance, she said, Mike, I was not looking for life insurance. I was looking for automobile insurance. So a mistake turns into over a half million dollars worth of annuities and could push up to a million dollars. So that's kind of my story. The thing is, is use your client worksheet, ask the questions, ask the golden question every time because I'm finding there's money to be made in that golden question. Anyway, I thank you for allowing me to share this. I uh, appreciate it. I hope you all have a very good day. Thank you. Hey everyone, Sean Ruggiero. Uh, we're welcoming one of my favorite people on earth, Linda Lempasso. Good to see you today. Good to see you, Thanks Sean. for visiting us. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Um, this is the uh, agent profile, something we've been doing and uh, interviewing agents in a quick format, but getting some valuable information from them. So um, Linda's been with us for a long time and has been, uh, you know, all time you're right up there is one of the overall leading annuity producers in Family First Life's history. You know, it's it's Matt Smith, you, you all are, are up there in the upper echelon. Uh, so this is a great interview. We've had you on the calls before, in the back when we did calls, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, had videos from you. Um, so this is a great chance for us to sit down together because we don't get to do that too often. Um, and Harold's not around, right? You know, right. no kids, no no one, right? So it's lots of fun. Um, but uh, Bridget's got me prepared here with four questions. Yeah. So I'm going to go through them and uh, we're excited to hear your answer. So first question, where are you from? How long have you been with Family First Life? And Linda, what did you do before this? So I'm originally from New York, but we live in Colorado, been there about 18 years. Mm -hmm. um, before Family First Life, I was actually a social worker um, and I was also in real estate. And so, um, and then you had asked me where I was, or when I came to Family First yeah, Life. Yeah, how long have you been with I've been with Family First Life from day one. So mm -hmm. the minute Family First opened the doors, I've been here. So. December 2013. Yeah. Yeah. So. yeah. Awesome. Um, question number two, Linda, did you, uh, when did you close your first annuity? And as, to, to clarify that question, it took, between Matt and I, when we first started back in 07 or 08, it took us 14 months in our career, are you writing mortgage protection, whatnot, mm -hmm. until we closed our first annuity. So when did you close your first annuity in your career? And how many annuities, and I know it's been a lot, yeah. but rough shot, how many annuities have you closed since then? So the first annuity, I'd like to say it was 2014. So a couple years into my career, mm -hmm. it wasn't until mm -hmm. we came to Family First Life that we could even have the discussion about annuities. Mm -hmm. um, since that time, I've, I've written close to seven million. Yeah, yeah, awesome. Um, what is the most important challenge that you've overcome in learning how to write nudity? Something that used to trip you up prior when you first started and now you know how to overcome it. I think, I think the application process in itself and being able to do an electronic application efficiently and going through those suitability numbers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that's something I'm super proud of to be able to do that on an electronic application. It does take mm -hmm. time, but I've yeah. definitely been able to overcome that. Yeah. And, and if you're new out there, um, Linda mentioned suitability. It's something you have to be very uh, sure with, okay? Meaning that if you don't ask the question the right way or you hear them the wrong way or you put a number, transpose it, and we, you know, we've done it, we're working appointments late, uh, working on weekends, um, it, it can boot it out and, and really trip up the whole nudity process and delay the whole thing and the client starts to get cold feet and et cetera, et cetera. So if, if you haven't written any, um, I would suggest on the e-app, you just save it first or if you're using paper app, 
you send it in to FFLAMS.com, um, upload it there, or email info at FFLAMS.com, and have them review it, you know. Mm -hmm. So uh, I know there's some of the bigger ones that we worked on together. We want to be very careful with that because we yes. just don't want to screw up that <laughs> commission there. Yep. Uh, last question. What would your primary piece of advice be for a brand new agent watching this? Do a proper financial inventory. There are several versions of it out there. Um, and don't just go through the motions in doing that, making mm -hmm. sure you're creating mm -hmm. the value the yeah. whole way through, setting point. yourself apart as an expert. Um, because when you get to that question at the end, and again, ask the question every single appointment, even if you're in a trailer park, do you have anything that acts like life insurance? Yeah. And, and Linda, last year, um, closed a deal for a person who's one of the most, um, and it was very positive attributes, but one of the most detail-oriented, read mm -hmm. every single line of everything. So you want to talk about, and was this very smart person, worked in the yes. aerospace or something, engine, you know, he was yeah. very smart. He knew all about financial products, had a vast investing mm -hmm. knowledge, could have probably gone and gotten a Series 6 license, and <laughs> went through everything. What you yeah. didn't know, you said, I'm going to check that for yeah. you. I'm going to check that for you. I do know that. Mm -hmm. And um, nothing to be intimidated because the benefits of what you had, guarantee, safety, security, with, with uh, better growth than most safe products, yeah. That's what he wanted. So exactly. those clients are out there. Have confidence in what you're presenting. Linda, thank you so much thank for, you. for joining us. Appreciate awesome. It. Thanks for having me. Thanks, Sean, for having me on the Advanced Market Sales Call this week. My name is Matt Smith. I am with Family First Life Northwest. And today I wanted to talk to you about Mutual of Omaha's Index Universal Life Express product and what it can do for your business, how you can increase sales overall. It's really our first true simplified issue product that's available in the marketplace for Index Universal Life for Family First Life. And the underwriting platform is simple. It's the same underwriting guidelines as Term Life Express. So it's literally just knockout questions. Uh, you're eligible up to age 70 for this product and you can go down to $25,000 as far as the face amount. So you can fit a lot of clients in that you might normally not, normally would not be able to afford these permanent type products that can now be able to afford these permanent type products. The other thing I would tell you is the illustration rates as far as the non-guaranteed side is about 6.13%. You compare that to maybe like a Forrester Smart UL that's performing at like around 4.2%. And I think you're going to see that you're going to want to shift your business towards this product in regards to comparing it to like a Forrester Smart UL. The other thing I would tell you is when you compare this product to a lot of return and premium products, I don't think it replaces return and premium in any sort of fashion. However, I do believe that it will have a lot of benefits for many, many clients that, that you meet. So the first thing I would tell you about the product is it's going to have all the living benefits that you want. So it has terminal illness, you know, 12 months or less. It's going to have your critical illness uh, product where basically you, if you, you've got like 12 different illnesses that come up as a diagnosis that will advance you money off of the face amount of the policy. And then also you've got chronic illness where if you can't perform, you know, two out of six daily, daily living activities that it can advance you money on the face amount of the policy as well. So all the traditional living benefits that you want as a producer are, are inside the product. Uh, what I did is I ran a couple different scenarios. I ran a 40 year old male and a 50 year old male. And the one thing I like about the product is it is a level premium for 20 years. So you can actually get a full return of premium in 20 years if someone wanted to get out of the product, which, which is pretty fantastic. And you're going to be able to accumulate cash value along the way. It's tracking with the S&P 500, which is the top 500 stocks in America. That also out earns 96% of mutual funds. So it's where you want your, your money to be if you're a client. Uh, it has your traditional 0% floors, so you can't lose money. It's indexing the policy, so you have a watermark every year. So you, you always capture gains every single year. Don't participate in losses like an, a true indexing product. So I think it's a very efficient, effective product. When I ran an illustration to compare it against any sort of return of premium product, the thing I did like about it is, for example, on a 40-year-old male, uh, for $250,000 non tobacco was $148 a month. Comparing it to some of our products that we carry, 25-year return of premium was 184, 30 years 175, and your cash back at the end of 25 years 
is 55,374 on that 184 premium and 63,153 on that 175 premium. Now, if you compare that to cash values inside the product on 25 years, you literally got over $50,000, $51,000 of actual accumulated value that you could borrow against that policy. And at the end of 30 years, it's $71,093. So pretty convincing totals here where you can borrow cash value along the way and also have a return of premium product uh, built into this. Same thing with a 50-year-old. I had uh, ran a 50-year-old uh, non-tobacco, 250000 317 a month. And on a 25-year return of premium product that we sell, it's three forty-four a month. You get one hundred three thousand two hundred back in 25 years. On a 30-year, it's three forty-six a month, where you get uh, one twenty-four five hundred back. And you compare that to the actual cash value of, of the products. You've got ninety-three thousand seventy-seven seven uh, in 25 years, and then you also have one twenty-three seven twenty-nine in the. Uh, uh, 30 year note. So, and if you want to extend the product and have a permanent product, you can continually pay and, and use it for that. Obviously, it's got all the traditional, you know, scenarios where you can solve the, what they call easy solve. So, Mutual of Omaha talks about this might be the easiest index universal life product that's ever been available on the marketplace. And I would agree because in their, in their uh, mobile software, if you just do an e easy solve, it will solve the premium till age 100. So the policy would not lapse until age 100. You know, to be able to have the face amounts go down to 25,000, I think is critical because you can, you can get policies maybe for final expense clients that are healthy enough or any, it, literally you can get a higher dollar premium for all those different scenarios that you might face where you normally wouldn't be able to do it. And if you do compare it to like a Forrester Smart UL, uh, Forrester Smart UL is about 4.2%, where this returns about 6.13%. So you're gonna be able to stack cash inside the policy at a much higher clip. Uh, the one thing that I would tell you is, is uh, if you want some illustrations ran, uh, email Ask a Specialist. Kim will run you some illustrations. It's very easy to understand. And I think it's a product that can be a game changer for you because the underwriting guidelines are simplified issues. So it's true knockout questions. You're going to get paid within a couple days. It is a paper app. So you make, like I said, you need to make sure and have that printed out before they get it on their uh, e-app platform. And if you look at it compared to your overall portfolio, you know, the comp is close to what your FFL comp is, which is critical. So it's the highest paying index universal life product we've ever had at Family First Life. So it can not only make a difference for the clients that you meet, but it can be a game changer for you and your practice. So if you have not looked at the Mutual of Omaha Index Universal Life Express product, please feel free to do so. Make sure you're prepared. You can either do the quoting on a mobile app, WinFlex, or email uh, Kim throughout the Ask a Specialist and we'll get you some illustrations. Long story short is, if you haven't already sold, sold one, I really recommend you start to pivot and take a look at that and how that you can incorporate that, especially for the clients above age 60 that can't get return on premium. This is a perfect product from 60 to age 70. When you think of ages 60 to 70, you should be going to this product every single time, in my opinion, simply because it can really, really increase sales. Because I tell you one thing, when you start selling products based off of savings versus expense, it really will start to drive up your sales. So take a look at it. I appreciate the time being on the call, and I'll talk to you soon. Thanks.